Over the years, I've seen a lot of behavioural problems with certain types of dogs that live in the city. Like Vanders and Fletch, two Kelpies bent on being major troublemakers. Vanders? Or garnish the German Shepherd with a weird obsession for a quad bike. Border Collies? Well, they just love rounding things up. For example, Mia and the mower, or Jesse and cars. No. <laughs> Believe it or not, these dogs all have something in common. These dogs have got working dog DNA in their genes, if you like. So how do we redirect this and solve the problem? Davey has got some answers. Mate, tell me what you do. Harry, it's all about unlocking that DNA. So what we do out here is we put them to work and we give them a job. Sounds good to me. Let's go have a look. At the Australian Canine Sports and Training Centre, Dave puts city dogs through their paces, running workshops in herding, with the rake being an extension of the handler's arm to signal the dog. He's fairly flying around. Yeah, very, very excited. He's been hanging over the back there and going, I love sheep, just let me at him. And now this is the point where the human's got to start taking control and managing the movement of the dog. Dexter's very much a city dog, and Sarah found that walking, running, and even bike riding wasn't enough to use up all that physical energy. So she decided to take up herding, and it's working a treat. If you reckon he's ready there, mate, you grab your dog and bring him out. That's awesome. He's a bit of an excitable teenager, isn't he? Is that you reckon? <laughs> Absolutely. He's very excitable, but as soon as he comes here, he gets quite focused um, and then does the job. So. Now, when you take Dexter home, what differences have you seen in his behaviour? Uh, he's definitely a lot calmer, um, and he just goes straight to sleep as soon as he gets home. So oh. he just relaxes. I bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd run that, run that yard half as many times, I'd be ready for a kip, I can tell you that. I think both of them are ready for a sleep yeah. after him. <laughs> Before Lucky came here, she persisted in staring at other dogs, which provoked them to attack. Now she's staring down sheep instead. And you can see those eyes. A real eye dog wanting to work sheep with its eyes. And since Simone has been working lucky in the yard, she's a different dog. I think one of the main benefits is that she's a lot more self-confident as well. So she's more responsive to me. And that's got to help you because you would naturally worry if you yep. were out and she was going yes. to the steering routine. Yeah, exactly. And now you feel you've got some control again. Yep. Ali and Tessie have progressed to a larger yard. They might one day be able to do field work, having come a long way redirecting Tessie's city behaviour. Poor old Haley there has a lot of problems in the dog park because it's got the Kelpie instinct of herding, so it herds the other dogs, it herds children, but it's got that intimidating German Shepherd look, and so people really freak out when this dog does her own stuff in the dog park. Tess is a lot more responsive, so she'll come when I call her, and she's much more gentle around the other dogs. To be able to bring a dog with working-like tendencies and behavioural problems to a situation like Dave has here and have that dog retrained to direct its energy towards what it's supposed to do, in other words, work sheep, is a fantastic idea. It makes the dogs more sociable, more used to city life, more controllable, and certainly gets rid of any so-called aggressive tendencies. And for Ginger, this all means more than just an opportunity to work on her natural instincts. She was rescued from a puppy farm, and after such a bad start in life, Ginger has a brand new life ahead of her as a working dog. So from a puppy farm to a sheep farm. Yep, that's exactly it, and she's going to love it. Absolutely.